And uh, I want to give a shout out to the people on the telephone. Yeah. Uh, Matt, you got to give me more room. I mean, look at this guy. You can tell they're related. I mean, look at this. It's like, there's no room here. But then again, I'm not, I'm not a real techie person. But I want to give a shout out to the people on the phone because you were the whole reason we started what we call Prophetic Pulse yes. years ago. Because what it is, is we want to share what we believe is the heart, the mind, the will, uh, the agenda of Almighty God. Man likes to get in the way of God's heart and mm -hmm. agenda, and it's important that we continue to locate what is God saying? What is He wanting? You know, True. and um, you know the fact that we have four Gospels, for example, was God communicating His heart and His will. It's the reason we have the epistles. God was communicating His heart and how we are to live as Christians. But here's the deal: He also is trying to reveal certain standards that if we will follow it, how many of you know? We will be blessed as a people, we'll be blessed as families, we'll be blessed as a city, we'll be blessed as a nation. So um, we want to welcome you for joining us today. Um, I do want to mention this uh, for some of you that are getting online. Please come to Opening the Heavens right here in Omaha, Nebraska slash Council Bluffs. It's actually in Council Bluffs. It's kind of across the river. But if you've never been to our great city, Omaha, Nebraska, it is beautiful. In fact, I don't know if we still have the number one zoo in the world. Do we have the number one zoo in the world? I think, We're, listen, that's our story. We're going to stick to it. We have the number one We're zoo. We're always in, in a competition with San Diego. And I, <laughs> from what I know, we've beat them All recently. Right. So How many yeah. think we have the number one zoo in the world? I think we have the yeah. number one zoo in the world. But, when you come, you're going to love Omaha. It's a great community, and I think it was at one point one of the greatest uh, cities to raise a family or something like that. Yep. Right. Listen, there's a lot of cities I wouldn't want to raise a family in, but Omaha's a good family. But you're and gonna, it's beautiful, it's too. It's beautiful, yeah. You're going to love it when you come, but we have a lot of power pack things uh, planned, and I want to make sure that you get in there for the premiere of Captain Zepto. All right, well, before we get started, how many of you uh, are excited about, I want to just give you a short Shiloh update. And uh, we... Uh, and they don't want to hear about the prophetic pulse until, until we give an okay. update. Because so, I can see how many so, of you know. How many of you know? <laughs> <laughs> so those of you that are watching, I just, first of all, I want to start off, first of all, saying the amount of response from you in this room, you that are watching, was so overwhelming. And it is continuing. And here's the deal. We've got to continue. So we... Um, the, the, the thing that we were looking at is locked up pretty tight, and uh, there's really no wiggle room. Uh, we didn't quite reach the goal to try to snatch it away anyway. Even if we did at that time, they uh, are locked in pretty strong. So here's the thing. The Lord spoke to me uh, something that I want to share with you this Sunday. I'm going to give you more updates um, because I'm going to talk about how to be led by the Lord because God will use things in your life as a point of reference. Now, how many remember that uh, the Lord identified Shiloh? Mm -hmm. He identified. That's what we're getting ready to come into. And I am so excited. And had we not had this happen, we would literally not be in the position to... We, we have found uh, <laughs> something better. Something yes. better. Yes. <laughs> something better. And so, oh, are you guys ready? Man, this is so... <laughs> And uh, so, bigger it's, and better. It's bigger and better. How many say bigger? Yeah. Better. I feel like Tim Allen. More power. <laughs> that. And uh, it, so, let's keep going. In fact, what I'm thinking about doing on Sunday is getting on the phones. And I probably won't do the, you know, the detail stuff. You know, I'll probably just say hello after I minister. And the reason why is because I want to keep this going. Because we didn't even have a war chest before. No, we didn't. Now we have a war chest for something bigger and better. And it's and, open new possibilities. And it's open up I a lot am new telling you. You want to say something? Well, about? I'll just say this is yeah. be encourage folks because as we move forward into this week, sometimes God just opens yeah. a door and says, surprise. And I'm telling you, um, we will have updates, but yeah. you will be more excited than you were last Sunday. How many are still excited? Tell you. <laughs> How many you still think we need to build the war chest? Yes. Your, oh, that's awesome. And those of you there, listen, let's keep going. We're going to keep moving because I'll give you more details on Sunday. And I'll give you a principle that the Lord showed me that is going to tie everything together. And by the way, I found this from one of our board members. Do you know Shiloh in the Bible was uh, one of the, it was actually when they first found it, uh, they put a tent up. That was the first thing that they did. So it was virgin soil. 
And it was the place where Samuel was trained as a, as a prophet. Yes, and so these are significant wow. clues because when the Lord gave the dream, he didn't identify anything. He just said, this is what I have for you. But I mean, you know, we have man's choice that gets in the way. But God, we want God Shiloh. How many wants God, God Shiloh? And yes. that's what we're after. And I'm telling you, I'm glad because something better is yes. in the works. And wait till you hear it and all that. So, all right. Well, I can't wait to get into tonight. Thank you for taking up your time. I realize that you have kids uh, that need to go to school. So what I thought you could do is just have them spend the night here and then you could take them right there to their school. <laughs> so, so we're not concerned about time, are we? All right. That was clever. So, yeah, it was a clever. All right. I want to show you a principle in 1 Kings chapter 17. I want to talk about how I believe that there is a window right now that is being open. You know, when you talk about a window, this is very important when you talk about prophetic things because man looks at, for example, in the next few weeks, we're coming into uh, the Jewish New Year. And that's extremely important because God has looked at the Jewish New Year. He looks at feasts to help to calculate time. And around the Jewish New Year, it's always really a, a, an interesting time around the time that we're getting ready to come into uh, is... God deals with the enemy. And that's why I find it very interesting, even with our Shiloh, how things are, are playing out. Because yes. God deals with the enemy. And what it, you know what he does for his people? Mm -hmm. He blesses them. That's right. This is why That's something right. extravagant is coming. Shiloh means the extravagant gift of God. And the same thing is coming over our nation. God is wanting to take the harshness that has been upon this season... You know, the number one thing, when I walk uh, dogs or I meet people uh, around the country or even in my own city, people literally say to me, Pastor Hank, thank you for praying. It is not easy out here. And I hear that. I mean, we've had inflation, mm -hmm. high gas prices. We have people bickering and fighting in Washington. We have kids right. that you know, have been trafficked. We have that proven, you know, through yes. different uh, reports. We've had, obviously, uh, you know, people feeling like, well, golly, we're being suppressed. We're being told what to do. And then when we do it, we were later on told, oh, well, that really was not uh, accurate information that we all gave you. So, you know, we, there's been a lot of confusion and a lot of harshness that has been yes. upon, uh, especially since 2020, since the new decade. And God has been saying that he is going to reset the earth. He is literally going to bring about a renewal. How many are ready for renewal? Yes. And Hallelujah. when a renewal takes place, it literally begins to bring something that is a refreshing to you, the people. It renews you. It refreshes you. Now, it doesn't mean that bad goes away because how many understand when God created the heavens and the earth, he had to separate light from darkness. There's a separation right now coming from that which is evil. And there's a lot of evil people. There That's is a right. lot of people that. that are bent on evil. I mean, burning down cities is evil. Yes. I don't care if you're a Republican, a Democrat, whatever party, if you don't, if, if you don't even affiliate with one. When you take a crack at innocent people, innocent yep. communities, and you begin to bring uh, absolute violence, violence and, right. and, and you destroy people's livelihoods, their businesses, there is something wrong with the city and a country. And our fight is for the compassionate needs to humanity. Right. We, we have to take care of the needs of our people, of our community, of our nation. And God, if we feel this way as people, how much more do you think God is looking? Boy, say and that. he is saying, Come I on. have compassionate towards the hurting, the suffering. Come on, watch this. Injustice. God is a God of justice. Yes. If he ignores the things that are going on that have affected your life, affected your community, affected our nation, that has been evil and wrong and hurtful. Look at what's happened in Maui. Oh. That is such a sad situation, yes. such a beautiful place. And there's people that are missing. They don't know where their family members are. They That's don't right. know where their children are. They went to leave and, and the roads were blocked. I mean, what is going on? This is a crazy time that we are living in. It doesn't make any sense. And then when you look at the pictures, it looks like a war zone in Maui. Right. This is not Horrible. what we as people deserve or need. That's right. And Come so on. we've got to keep standing. We've got to keep, yes. keep doing what is right. But here's the thing. What does God think about all of this? 
Do you yeah. think God is hard-hearted? No, he's not. Do you think he's ignoring it? No, he's not. That's why the scripture says in the book of Psalm uh, chapter 89 that the foundation of God's throne is righteousness and justice. And if God doesn't deal with these things that are happening in the earth, then, right. then he's not the righteous judge that he said. That That's right. So I want to open it up, first of all, with the 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. Watch what happens with the prophet Elijah. Now, I want to just kind of lay this out there, and then we're going to get into some stuff. Because I feel like some of you, you're getting tired, and, and you can't get tired. That's right. You can't get tired when you're in a spiritual battle. You can't get tired when you're facing things that are trying to take your freedoms. Listen, we don't live in another country. We live in the United States of America. Our Constitution is all about we the people, freedom. Yes, it is. Come on now. So Elijah stands up, the Tishbite. I don't know what a Tishbite is. It almost sounds like it's one of those sounds snacks like you get in the morning. Sounds like a mosquito bite. <laughs> it sounds like a mosquito bite. <laughs> Elijah the Tishbite, you know, get a Tishbite, you know. know. All right, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God lives. So here you have this guy going up against a king. So he was inserting himself politically. And he says, as the Lord God lives before whom I stand, there will not be dew nor rain these three years, but according to my word. Now, we think that this is some crazy long-haired prophet that probably stunk, right? <laughs> that went up into the presence of King Ahab. He kept his distance and he prophesied, at my word, it's not going to rain for three and a half years, not even dew or, dew or, dew or, or rain. And it was Elijah's words. No, look at James 5, 17. And this is very important because yes, yes, how many is. of you have been praying for your family? How many of you have been praying for your community? How many of you have been praying for your country, wherever you're watching, wherever you live? You have to understand that God is listening to your prayers. And this is what Elijah, he didn't just throw out his words. At my word, right? right. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. So he was a man. He understood harshness. He understood pain. He understood the fight. And he prayed earnestly that it may, might not rain. So what did he do before he ever delivered the word? He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. So it That's wasn't good. just some loose prophetic guy running wild that stunk and saying it my word. No, he prayed. He got God's heart. He got, okay, you're all laughing. <laughs> And, and, and he got God's heart. And as a result, he was able to go in and say at my word, because that word that he spoke was the word of the Lord or the word from God's heart. How many of you see the difference? Yes, that's yeah. So what I'm going to show you tonight is what I believe are God's words to us after times of prayer. We've been praying. It's going to help identify where are we heading? What is God saying? All right. Now, look, look at first Kings 18. Here's where it kind of is what I would call the the gap, you know, if there's a gap. So God ministers a prophetic word or he begins to say that something is going to happen. Notice what happens. All right. Now, this was a three and a half year famine. How many of you would say, golly, since the new decade, we were all excited for 2020, were we not? Amen. How many were excited that all so sudden COVID hit? Mandates hit. Right. Forced rules. Right. The list went on and on and on. Gas prices went up. The economy started getting more People and more interesting. People lost family. People lost family. That's the thing that is really very heartbreaking. How many of you know somebody, family member that, that was lost as a result of COVID or whatever? Okay, it, that's heartbreaking. Look, at there's a lot of hands. And those of you that are watching, you could say the same. So here you are, this three and a half years. Now, the prophet, do you realize that the word that he shared, my word, wasn't his word, it was God's word, but he was giving the word. It's not going to rain for three and a half years. And now he had to live in the same conditions of what he just prophesied. Mm, Interesting. Now, all of a sudden he says, um, I, he says, get up for I hear the sound. I think it's verse 41, the sound of the abundance of rain. Okay. So now after three and a half years, the season is about to shift. I want That's you to say awesome. that with me. Say the season, the season is, about is, about is about to shift. And this is what I want you to hear tonight. And those of you that are watching, I really believe that things are about to shift because God is releasing a sound. He's releasing something from heaven that is saying, listen, it may be harsh right now, but this is not 
where we are ultimately going to wind up. Something is changing. And it took a prophetic voice to hear the sound, to identify, okay, this season is about to shift. That's good. Now, was it in manifestation yet? Was there any rain yet? No. What did he do to his, his uh, servant? What did he tell the servant to do? And you could read this in the rest of the verses. He said, you go out and you keep praying yes. until you pull That's the manifestation awesome. into being. Come on. What are you believing for? Yeah, that's good. What are you fighting? What are you facing? Come on, what do you want to see in your nation? What do you want to see in your city? What do you want to see in your community? Do you want to continue to see violence, hardship, or do you want to see a better day? God is saying, listen, I am poised to move across this nation to give us out of the drought season, out of the harsh season, and shift you into something that is way better. Come on now. That's awesome. Do you know in 2 Kings 7, verse 1, the prophet had to come and say, this time tomorrow things are going to change. Right. Because they were in a really hard famine. Exactly. So God always uses things prophetically to identify how things are beginning to change. Go ahead. And let me just say, too, when you brought up, you know, if you look at verse 43 there, when he sent the servant out, he said, go up. Of course, all the servant could see was that there was nothing. So, you know, you, sometimes you can be in a place where in the natural it looks like nothing. Although, I do want to remind everybody, as you just look at the things happening in our nation, um, there are things that are very visible that are happening. So, remember, keep your eyes always on the praise. Keep it on the good. Keep it on the reports. Don't keep it on what the devil's doing. Keep it on what heaven is doing. Just remember that um, because then you will see what's happening. But the servant in his vision could only see nothing. But I notice it says here, and he said, go again seven times. And I thought, well, why would he say that? Why would he tell him to keep going out there? And each time it looked like there was nothing because he was trying to say, sometimes there has to be a journey, a press to get to the place where God is taking you. There's steps, there's placeholders, there's markers, there's things. You're going to have to go, you know, the scripture when it declares that line upon line, glory to glory, here a little, there a little. And so it said he had to go seven whole times and it came to pass that on the seventh time, behold, verse 44, there arose only a little cloud. After all of that pressing in prayer, that's that's the, the give up, don't give up speech of the night is sometimes even after seven attempts, multiple attempts, then he only saw a little cloud. But then it says he saw a little cloud out, come out of the sea as a man's hand. He said, go up and prepare and that the rain stop you not. So that little cloud, and I want to just say this, these little signs, things we're seeing happen in our nation by way of breakthrough. I feel like folks, come on now, those are the little clouds that are happening. And the next thing that we're going to hear is go run because the, don't let the rain stop you because the abundance of rain is right. coming. I feel like that's Amen. the word of the Lord Amen. for this season that we're living Anything in. you guys want to say, again, look for the, look for the little things because sometimes yes. we're looking for some big event that's that we're exactly, missing the little things exactly. that God is doing, the little victories. Right. You know, who would have thought that we would even be here three years into a new decade? Yeah, right. So, all right, anybody want to comment on that? And then we're going to get into some prophetic well, comments. Pastor Brenda, as you were talking about how he said, prepare thy chariot, the word that stuck out to me was prepare. So even though there was just a little cloud, there was a preparation taking place. So once that thing is coming to pass, it's too late. If it's already happened, you're not ready. Right. In process, as it's starting to take shape, that's why the prophetic is so important. It's giving you signs and clues to what? Get in a place and a position to be able to receive. Because if you wait until the thing has already come, then it's too late and you're going to miss out. So always stay prepared and in a moment of readiness That's so really that you good. take that word and now it's been activated because now you've prophetically acted along with that word. Very good. good. Did you have anything Very you want to add to that, Matt? I mean, you look at that and say, you know, I mean, look how many times Jesus talked to his disciples and was telling them about what was going to happen to him. And they were like, no, Lord, that's not going to happen to you. Well, honestly, there was only one that <laughs> stuck with them through the whole journey. Everyone else fled because they had this preconceived notion that it wasn't going to happen, and they fled. This is why we have got to be in line, in tune with what God is saying prophetically, because it is really foretelling what's going to come. Mm -hmm. 
All right, it's not just uh, speaking nonsense. It's truthfully the word of the Lord that is coming from what? His, it's his secrets that are being revealed to the prophets. Amen. Amen. Okay, we have to be in Powerful. line with that because God is saying to the prophet, listen, you're my closest friend. I'm revealing you the secrets on my heart. Yes. If we don't listen and, and be in tune with that, then we're pretty much telling the Lord that his secrets really don't matter. Yeah. Wow. And that, and to your point, Matt, that staying in tune with the prophetic word or keep going seven times, pressing in, yes. that's what, if they would have pressed into the words of Jesus, the 12 disciples, if they would have listened to what he was saying, they might not have fled at the time well, of his. They were too busy his, bickering about who the greatest in the kingdom was going to be. They would have stayed so, on you know. point. So that's good. <laughs> and one of the things that I'm going to talk about on Sunday, when just our journey that we're walking through for our Shiloh, you know, at two o'clock in the morning, I got up and I just began to, you know, spend time with the Lord. And he spoke to me about something that I want to teach you that you find here. And it's this, God will give you a point of reference. The point of reference is not the thing. It's to, you, you'll feel peace in the point of reference. Okay, do you know how many different girls, maybe, I'm not saying there's a lot, <laughs> that I thought might have been the wife? <laughs> But all they were is a point of reference. That's all of what our I story. Want, what I want in a wife and what I certainly don't want in a wife. But they were all pointing me to the ultimate manifestation of what I was supposed to have in my life. So here's the sound of the abundance of rain. That is the point of this reference. I hear a sound. Something is shifting. Well, there's no proof. But wait a minute. Where's the cloud? you got to keep moving so that the so manifestation good. will come to pass. And can I tell you, let's keep going on our journey and build our war chest because I'm telling you guys, we have something big coming and I've already, I've so already excited. looked at it. So I'm anyway, excited. all right, now here's the thing. All right, now watch this. So I want you to look at February 12th because this is significant when you talk about things that are happening. Let's talk about the weather. Uh, how many of you noticed that the weather has uh, been very interesting this summer? And to I say the least. To say the least. So I have friends that live down in Texas, and they've been in like a, I don't know, 40, 50 day, 100 degree record. They've never had it. How many of you know somebody in Texas? Don't mess with Texas. How many of you know somebody in the South? They're, t they're saying that it is so 100 degree temperature. Okay. They're frying eggs on the when, pavement. Yeah, <laughs> when that prophetic word came out of my mouth back, well, I'm going to read you one that happened back in, I think it was February. Another one was in uh, April, and then another one in May. God was speaking about this season. I didn't, you know, you always hate it when it has to do with something that ultimately uh, can, can affect the innocent or, or hurt the innocent or the innocent are involved. Does, does that make sense? Yes. And so uh, when this word was spoken, God was trying to tell us what kind of summer that we were going to have and what specifically we were to look for as God's redemptive plan. Now, this is so important as you look, and some of you, and you that are watching and listening by phone, you want to give up. You have to understand that God, through Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, there's a key component. God is always injecting himself into humanity, into cities, into nations, as long as people will turn to him. Do you understand? So he always has what's called a redemptive plan. Even the days of Noah, how terrible that was, that the whole earth was destroyed. God still had a plan of help and a plan of hope to ultimately reset the earth. Because wickedness, the Bible said, was at a level that it had never been before. That's right. why I will not be silent when Say it comes it. to wickedness, injustice, evil. I, I wouldn't be in the ministry if I didn't speak out. That's right. I have to. It's part of the territory. That's right. It's what my assignment and my calling is that I have to do to, so, so we can get God to come down and intervene. So I say that because um, I gave a, a I, I was praying one day. It was, oh, golly, Anthony, you would know because it would be, uh, it would be somewhere around the end of August where I was praying for Texas and th those areas. And all of a sudden I started seeing two storms uh, that the Lord was kind of alerting me that were were trying to form or would form and bring bucket loads of, of water over the Gulf and those drought riddled places. And I'm like, no, Lord, they cannot have any more destruction. And so um, last I heard, somebody said there are two storms right now that are coming across 
uh, the Atlantic. And I think we should take a few moments right now yes. to pray against yes. the storms. Now you yes. say, well, can we do that? Listen, Jesus spoke to the storm and he said, peace be still. Yes. Then Jesus turned around and said, I've given you power and authority. Right? So we have yes, a certain authority. We have a certain right to pray. And yes. we need to pray because the Bible says, watch this. If two or more agree as touching on. any one thing upon this earth, it will be given to us by our Father in heaven. So, Father, right now we yes, pray Lord. for those that might be in the path of what someone said were two storms that that are coming across the Atlantic Ocean and we don't know where yes, they're going to land Jesus. up. Father, there's islands, there's innocent people. Father, even in the islands of yes. the sea, the East Coast, the Gulf Coast, Father, the southern parts of our nation. And Lord, you taught us when Jesus was in the boat in Mark uh, 4, he spoke to the wind and he commanded the wind to cease, to stop. And God, we are praying for your mercy. We are praying for your divine act yes, of Lord. righteousness and justice yes. and intervention that you you, God, can stop the storms and bring peace and safety yes. for the sake of the innocent, for the sake of those that are potentially in harm's oh, way. Yes, God, Jesus. we pray that those storms would dissipate, that, Father, they would have no breath, that they would have yes. no ability to yes. kill, steal, or destroy. God, you can send them the out to the sea. Jesus. You can redirect their path. And we are asking you yes, for a divine Lord. intervention. We are calling out to you, the God of righteousness, the God of justice, and we are praying yes, for your Lord. mercy over the Caribbean. Father, we are praying your mercy oh, over hallelujah. the East Coast, over, Father, the Gulf states, and even over this great nation, the United States of America. Yes, Lord, we cry out to you, God, yes. that you said, come boldly to your throne of grace, and we would receive grace. We would receive mercy. We would receive help in the time of need. Yes, God, Lord. that's what we expect. Grace, unmerited undeserved favor God for those that are in the path yes. of these storms and we bind up the enemy we say he has yes. no authority to Jesus. come against the people to steal from them to destroy their precious land and their communities Lord we stand against the enemy and say no you will not yes. you will not you will not and we are calling out to you God Break your power oh God yes, for mercy Lord God touch. we're calling out for your help in this time of need Oh, Father, oh, bless the people. Yes, Lord God. Bless and protect the people in Yeshua's name. Yes. Oh, Father, even those that are watching tonight. Yes. God, no matter what they're facing. Come on. No matter the hardships that are upon their lives. No matter, God, maybe some are tired tonight. I pray for a supernatural strength. Yes, For Lord. the weary. Oh, God, you give strength to the weary. And for whatever reason in my heart, God, my heart, I feel the compassion of you, God, that there are those that are watching tonight that are really suffering, that they have been experiencing hardship, that, God, they yes, are ready Lord. to quit and they are ready to give up. Lord, the scripture says in Check the book of Daniel book that in the us. last days the enemy comes to wear out the saints. And I'm asking you yes, by Lord. your great hand of strength, strengthen your people tonight, God. Yes, and may they not be given to fear. Fear. May they not be given to anxiety. May they not be given to worry. May they not be given to stress. That's right. But That's I pray right. that the compassion of you, the Almighty God, that in there when there was a need, when there was a multitude of people, and the hour was far spent, and the people had been with Jesus for three days, and they were hungry. Lord, you did not send them away, but you got an intervention supernaturally, and you fed the multitudes. Oh God, with five loaves and two fishes, and I'm asking you tonight God yes, do supernaturally do something we when pray, some are saying oh Lord, it's too Jesus, late when Lord, some are saying you don't know how dark yes. it is when some are saying you don't know how much I'm hurting how much I'm afraid I don't believe that there will be a better day God you can intervene like you did yes, in the feeding Lord of the Jesus. multitudes oh, and I'm asking hallelujah. you to do so today Yes. We hear a sound of something different. We hear a sound of something shifting. We hear a sound of, of a better day. For God, our communities, our cities, our great nation, but the people thereof. 
And so we thank you and we honor you. Now receive that strength if you're listening tonight. If you're watching, yes. just receive that strength. Just say, God, I receive your strength. Lord, I receive, I receive your, your perspective. I receive your perspective. I will not be deceived. I will not be deceived. I will not be discouraged. I will not be discouraged. I will not be given. I will not be given. To anxiety. To anxiety. To fear. To fear. To worry. To worry. But I set my eyes. But I set my eyes. Not upon man. Not upon man. But I set my eyes. But I set my eyes upon you, the Almighty God. Upon you, the Almighty God. You're my refuge. God. You are my refuge. You're my strength. You are my strength. You're my shepherd. You're my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not You leave want. me beside still waters. You leave me beside still Green waters. Green pastures. Green pastures. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Even though I walk through the I valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. I will fear you no evil. You are with us in you this time. You are with us in this time. Surely good. Surely goodness and your mercy and your mercy follows us this day follows us this and all day. the days of our entire life and all the days of our entire God, life. God, we honor you. For and that. Lord, we honor you. Thank you, Lord. I feel in like Jesus there's somebody watching right now, <laughs> and I feel like I don't know. I just see something in my heart where you have a thermometer uh, in your mouth and you're running a high temperature and you're trying to listen. You're trying to lock in. You know, Jesus rebuked a fever in the Scripture for Peter's mother-in-law, and it left. I speak to anyone that yes, may have Lord. a fever in their body, a high temperature, yes. Yes, or any Jesus. kind of sickness or disease. And That's I say right. in the authority of Yeshua, Jesus' name, yes. you are healed. We healed. come into faith for a divine turnaround. That, that fever breaks, yes, that Lord. temperature breaks. And anyone that needs a touch from God right now, the arm of the Lord is not so short that it cannot touch you and heal you. For when Jesus was crucified upon the cross, it says by his stripes, that you are already healed. And so, Lord, we pronounce that over your precious people, that they receive it now. And I thank you for it. Yes, 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 Amen. yes, yes, yes. Amen. You know, one thing I feel to pray also, Pastor, is for those of you, because of all of this craziness in the economy, right now, I stretch my hand to thank pray you, for economic relief upon the people. Yes. Father, those that are Even in Even those fear, that gave in to Shiloh, yes, they sacrificed yes, a Father, lot, and it got God's I, attention. I break the power you, of financial anxiety Father, in the name you. of Jesus. I speak and declare provision you, from God. Thank I you, speak and declare financial stability upon the Thank people. You, Lord. Lord, we're crying out to heaven that those that have been affected by this ridiculous economic situation, that, Thank Father, you, that they would be absolutely provided for by heaven, that they would be in a place of stability. Father, that you would cause every dollar for them to be stretched. Father, we ask you, Father, those that have suffered in their unemployment through the whole last three years, that, Father, that they would come in to um, gainful employment, yeah, gainful yes. blessing. Yes. And we just speak right now an economic relief, a divine economic relief that comes from heaven, that comes from God. Father, release your angelic host, we pray, upon every person's finances under the sound of my voice. Cause every seed that they've sown, that it will be a hundredfold harvest. Father, double, triple blessings yes. according to the scriptures that promise it. And we thank you for it, Father, yes. right now yes. in Jesus' name mighty name. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. All right. Hallelujah. Anything that you guys want to comment or say before we move on, I want to share a couple of prophetic words here. Okay, let's go. I want to read this one. I don't know if they have this one. This was from August, uh, April 16th of, of 2023, and I'm just going to read it. Um, I, I found this one today. I had it, but it says, this was down in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, that I ministered this. It says, pay attention to your summer months. For things will come to a greater place of intensity. Yet there is that which men do not see, underground China, those that meet in Taiwan. You know, Taiwan, do you see that? Is that, oh, uh, that's not the one. This is, uh, is it the one? Maybe it is. Okay, okay, yeah, here it goes. That men do not see, sorry, my glasses are uh, fogged up here. I should have, should have cleaned them. <laughs> Uh, underground China. Those it always me. helps. <laughs> okay. It always helps. I got smudge marks. And you in the United States that pray. Therefore, I will take your prayers. Watch this. And I'll pour them back on the earth. And you watch through June, July, and August as there will come unusual shakings, unusual winds. And watch this. Temperatures that will reach above the hundreds. I don't know if they have that one up there. So, Do they have that one up there? Okay. Temperatures that will reach what? Hundreds. Okay, this above. is April 16th. Now you might say, well, you know, Pastor Hank, 
Everybody knows that it's hot. Everybody knows that it's weather. But when God tells you ahead of time specific things, how I many you know it could have gone the other direction? It could have gone and been the mildest uh, summer on record. So that would have been very risky to say that, right? Right. But the very thing that was said is actually what happened. Now, this is why. Look at Matthew 16, verses 1 through 3. So Jesus is talking, and his disciples throw something out to him. And they say these words to him. Uh, if they'll put Matthew 16, 1 through 3 up. And then I'll read you the rest of this word. The Pharisees also came with the Sadducees. The Pharisees and the Sadducees always doubted Jesus. Mm -hmm. They always questioned him. They always looked for some, you know, way to report something to try to frame him, make him look bad, and make him look like he was an idiot. Right. Okay, that was the modern media way of how they did things. <laughs> right. Right? right. Let's lie about him. Let's twist his words. They did it all the time. But notice what, what happened. The Pharisees came tempting, desired, okay, and tempting. So they, they, they were trying to set a Baiting trap. Baiting him. Hey, we got a microphone in front of you. We're going to tempt you. We're going to test you. We're going to trap you, right? right? Yep. And so the Pharisees came. They tried to tempt him that he would show them a sign from heaven. If you really are the son of God, you know. And he answered and he said to them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather. For the sky is red. So why is Jesus now going to the weather and making a prophetic point? Hmm, that's interesting. Come so on. So what he's telling us, April 16th is not just some, well, this is, this is so predictable. Well, it's, why didn't you write it on April 16th if you knew <laughs> what the temperature was since you know everything? <laughs> yeah. You know, crit critics, oh, well, that's just the way summer is. <laughs> well, well, then why didn't you put out your report? Right. <laughs> and go on record where people could lie about you like they do. Yeah, come on, say it. Okay. That's good. That's what the media does. They like to lie. Mm -hmm. People like to lie. Yeah. They're always looking for something. But here's the thing. They were doing that to Jesus. But look at what he did. And in the morning, it'll be foul weather. He said, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, you hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky, but you can't even discern the times. Wow. So God is saying, I'm trying to make a parallel between weather and the times, mm -hmm. a prophetic sign. So Powerful. let's go back to this word. This is awesome. So God says, April 16th, temperatures will reach above the hun hundreds. People say, what is happening? Has God, has God gone mad that things are this heated and intense? God says, no, I will show the earth at this time as the prayers of my people who've prayed shall be poured back upon the very soil of this country that the earth will shake. Look where it will shake. And then God says, watch now, there will be exposures. Do you know what's all over the news right now? Is things being exposed. Yes. Left and right and in between. I don't think I ever remember a time right now that there are laptops that are in discussion. <laughs> right. What are we doing with $400 billion to Ukraine? Say and that. what's nothing as much going to Hawaii? Right. There are stuff that's being well, that needs to get in said. <laughs> question. Okay. There are absolute whistleblowers coming forth. Right. People saying, wait. We're, we, we're on the side of the left, and this is what's happened. Or we're on the side of the right, and this is what's happening. People are coming forth, and things are beginning to be exposed. Come on, that's true. Isn't, yes, that, isn't yes. that amazing? It's amazing. So you, you, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, you have to understand, God said that temperatures would be a sign that things will be heated because things are coming now to a whole nother level of exposure. Come on. Why is it coming to another level of exposure? Because if God doesn't deal with injustice, he is an unjust God then. Right. Yes. So what is your job? Your job is to pray for the innocent. Yes. Your job is to pray for God's justice. Your That's job good. is not to absolutely uh, get in the way of God and say, well, hey, nothing's happening. Right. Don't speak wrong. Don't speak. Yeah, right. We can't speak wrong. That's why it says in John 4, 35, say not that there's, you know, four months and then a harvest. In other words, that's the predictable thing. Usually, hey, there's four months and you have a harvest. God's saying, don't. I'm not doing it the conventional way. That's great. I'm showing you wow. there is a, a cloud the size of a man's hand. It's small things that you're going to begin to see that ultimately will lead to a bigger breakthrough. Okay, how many of you have ever heard of a dam break? Yes. Do you know it's usually not some, you know, guy backing his... Um, I don't know, his yacht into the dam that <laughs> breaks it, right? 
don't know if that would even work. I might not. That was a really dumb illustration. But but it's not something big, you know, some guy, oh, I, I, I took the cruise ship and I went up this thing and I hit the dam, you know. No, it's usually some little thing that they didn't know that caused a, a penetration yes. that the force of it, it couldn't hold back. Are you listening? This is what I'm trying to tell you. We are so much looking at one person or we're looking at something on, big that the... we're ignoring the smaller right. signs that are pointing to ultimately what is our breakthrough for the new season that God is trying to say. That's why I didn't do prophetic school tonight. I felt like God was saying, encourage the people. Now watch this. Let's go on. Let's look at uh, this one. Uh, was... By the way, on that four months to the harvest, while you yeah. dig out that next word, um, that is the natural. Yeah, right. We don't, we serve the God of the supernatural. Yeah. Don't always look at the natural wow. way wow. of things. The natural yeah. is in Nebraska, summer is from, you know, June to August or September. That's the natural way. But that's why Jesus said that. If you say there's four months till the harvest, that means your eyes are only on right. what natural circumstances can produce. And he was yeah. saying, no, you need to have your eyes on. God can defy the four months until the harvest. That's right. He can make it so that the plowman and the re reaper, they overtake each other so God is right. saying right now look at the supernatural of what he's right. gonna do because it's gonna blow our minds well and it is because this is what I want you guys to see that are here it, what you have to understand and I want to read this next prophecy to you is Jesus is coming for a glorious church yes he the is the church is not glorious at this point I'm not saying that critically I'm just saying listen we fight among ourselves like cats and dogs yeah. We argue right. over, you know, denominations. We argue over doctrine. We argue over all kinds of crazy stuff. Right. And God has promised us that there is coming a presence, a glory to the earth as the waters cover the sea. Now, this is important because even with what I walked through this week already, and I'm watching something bigger manifesting for you and the sacrifice of what you gave, I'm like, oh my Lord. When you said a something extravagant and gave a name, Shiloh, oh, you aren't kidding. So if you're, we're gonna just be pulled out of here, why would you give something extravagant to wow. us? Why would you even bother to promise a global outpouring of your glory in the last days? Look at Isaiah chapter 6. This is awesome. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Yes. I feel like something has shifted. In the current season that we're in, you say, well, Pastor, what, what is it that you're feeling? I'm feeling that God, his hand is getting closer and closer in blessing, closer and closer in his presence. And when his presence comes, watch this. What happened in Matthew 17 when Jesus was transfigured in glory? His countenance changed. That's right. When God's glory comes, guess what happens? Things change. This is why I'm telling you. God's glory is coming. What happened when the pillar of cloud by day and the fire by night? Come on, how many watch the Ten Commandments? Yes. If I had a moment, I'd walk like Moses. You, you would think, boy, that guy looks like Moses. I've practiced it many times we around might the not house say with the it, vacuum but, cleaner, all right? Okay. But, but, but here's the point. The point is, you see, you see the pillar of cloud by day, the fire by night. That was the glory of God. What did it do? When it looked like they were trapped on a beach... Pharaoh was pursuing them, and they had nowhere to go but God. We have nowhere to go right now as we're watching what's happening but God. God did something supernatural, and he brought his glory in, and he dealt with wickedness, and he drowned it, and he reset a nation. This is where we're heading. Through what? His glory. Now, let's read this prophecy. This is awesome. Look at slide two. Do you have something? No, no. You're good. All right. So I say to you, look at slide two. What is the answer? Shall I take my church at this time, or shall I do what I've promised? God says, I shall have a glorified church that shall be full of my power and my glory. Did I not say that in the last days I would pour out my spirit? This is the answer. You say, Lord, how is this the answer? Must I remind you in the days of the terror that filled the hearts of a nation as the mighty army of Pharaoh and of his warriors and troops pursued? What did I do to restrain even war? Come on. Come on. What did I do to abate terror? 
What did I do to overthrow governments and kings and one king, Pharaoh? I poured out my spirit in a pillar of fire and a cloud, and this is what I shall do, that the earth will be reset and brought back to order again. That's awesome. See, do you understand God. that? We've we got to take our eyes off of all the things that pull us into divisiveness and into the fight. And we got to start putting our eyes on God and saying, God, Isaiah 60, watch what it says. Roberts preached this. Look at verses 1 through 3. Can, you, can somebody read this besides me? Because I'm doing all the talking here. Go ahead, Anthony. <laughs> oh, sorry. By the way, while he's doing that, aren't you thankful for our game changers being part of the Pauls, yeah. the next generation of bold warriors? We love these guys. You guys are awesome. That's Isaiah 60. Yeah, verses 1 through 3. They'll put it right I'm, there. Here I'm it is. There uh, uh, Isaiah 60, not okay. 16. Isaiah 60. S 60. Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, the light has come. The glory of the I'm Lord is risen. I'm on it. Do you want me to just read yeah. it? Okay, go, okay go. I'm there. Here it is. Okay, arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For the, behold, or look, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross or dense darkness shall cover yes. the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles, or the world, or those that don't know God, shall come to thy light. I love this verse. And the kings to the brightness of your rising. Amen. Well, and, that, and this is important. Okay, so how many understand there's the difference between light and darkness? That says darkness will be upon the earth. Yes. Right? Yep. Gross darkness upon the people. Do you know what gross darkness is? It's mental oppression. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. we've seen gross darkness. How many of you think we've yes. seen gross darkness? And people have been mentally oppressed. And people have, have, have gone the way of gross darkness. Right. I mean, there's things that I'm looking at that I'm going, I never would have thought in my entire life that people would stoop to that would stoop to that level of evil of darkness how many would say that over, that is the truth or as, as you look at it too now i want to show you because god is still saying that things are shifting and the weather is an indicator look at look this at the slide good. 3 very good this is this is powerful i want to encourage you tonight this is what i felt i felt like some of you were getting tired and uh, i'll be honest with you uh, i'm probably one of those that needs a nap but here's the point <laughs> the, i'm not tired spiritually yeah. I'm not tired in my determination to see God come to our country. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but I felt like some of you were getting that way. And so you need to be encouraged, okay? How many say every once in a while you have to kind of pull your bootstraps up again? Let me see Always. Oh, look yeah. at this. All right. Some of you. All right, but look. May 11th, 2023, and so it will be, says the Spirit of God, that men have looked to the climate, and they say climate change and climate control. But they do not understand that the God of the times and seasons, even of the weather, for I speak now, and I say, look closely, for there shall be extreme once again. How many would agree with that it has been extreme? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You say, but God, you've said this before, which it referenced other times that God has said this. But it is my season, and it is not yours. Well, that settles it for me. Yes, hallelujah. And I've declared that you are in the season of a great fall when I spoke this. Now, how do you, does that mean that it's going to happen in the fall? We would love to and put our own interpretation on it, but he didn't say this fall. He said you're in the season of a great fall. That might be literally fall like in autumn. Brenda already has her decks, uh, decorations out. Hey, the pumpkin box came how many, out. How many got all their decorations up? It's just crazy. Pumpkin box is out. I told you, you know, every morning to get coffee, I have to use a machete just to try to get to the coffee machine because all the plants. Now, you know what I'm doing now? I'm having to jump over pumpkins just to get there, you know? But I got to ask everybody. So. Anybody bought a mum yet? Anybody bought mums? Honey, mums right. the word. Mums We're not the talking word. about Come on, okay, see? So, so. I'm not alone here. This is the best time of the year, though. Right. Respectfully, it is. <laughs> That's all right. good. But, it, but God, you said this before. I'm going to keep reading. Thank you. But it's my season and it's not yours. And I've declared that you are in the season of a great fall. And when I spoke this, many said that it would surely come in the fall. And they looked to a time that could be calculated, calculated by the seasons of your very seasons. But I say to you that you're in the time of my season. It is the great fall. It is the fall of kingdoms. Mm. It is the fall of kings. It is the fall of leaders. It is the fall of corruption. Do you know since this word in May, you look at some of the wow. stuff that's been happening around the world. Boy, say it. Say <clears> it. You look at some of the kingdoms around the world, right. some of the leaders that's, that's happened around the world. Yeah. 
Right. You know, I mean, we, there was something that happened with one particular nation where somebody got assassinated. Yeah. It's crazy. There is crazy stuff going on. Yes. But yet, here's the thing. You will get discouraged if you didn't think somehow that God was injecting himself in the earth. Right. I've had more people say, well, where's God? Where's God? Where's God? God's not falling off his throne. Right. He's trying to give us signs. And he said, one of these signs are going to be in the extreme temperatures. Let's look at the next one. <clears throat> Slide four. It is fall, even in the supreme. Yes, even upon your supreme court. For I've come now to judge the judges of the earth, says the living God. Now, how many believe that's his right? Yes, of course. The, the Bible says that's that his he'll right. do it. <laughs> and I will give you judges as the first. That's the book of Isaiah that God promised in the book of Isaiah that he's going to give them judges that don't legislate from the bench. That's right. You know why it's dangerous to legislate from the bench? Because then it's the judge's opinion. That's right. And it's That's not exactly according right. to the Constitution. According to Constitution or what is honorable and lawful. That's right. Yep. And God says this is going to change. And there shall come shakings as there's become even more intense. And there will be temperatures that will reach for a season in the hundreds. Mm. Well, it's been in the seasons in the hundreds. <laughs> yes. And it will be as though it would be 103. And you will say, what is this? And God says, do you not know Psalm 103? Forget not my benefits. All right. When, when we heard Psalm 103 and the temperature 103, we should have immediately stopped and did what God says. He told me the other day in my heart. He spoke these words in my heart. Hank, you need to steward better over the words that I give you. If I said it would be 103 and you're supposed to go to Psalm 103 and claim the benefits over the nation, which is what I'm going to preach at the arena, all those benefits that he forgives you of iniquity, heals you of disease, it's not just individually, it's also for a nation. Come on. Yes. Wow. And I'm going to talk about that. Mm. So you have to understand that what God is trying to locate is we don't just look at 103 if he says it. And you might say, well, you know, it's, it's been 103 before. That's not what the point is. He said, for a season this summer, it's going to be in the hundreds. And look where it's 103. So let's show some of the places uh, with these different. Because, well, let me read it first and I'll show you it real quick. He says, and it'll be 106, 107. God says, do you not understand that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever? Well, I guess that's 100 and, Psalm 106 and 107. Yes, it He's is. trying to tell us yes, it what is. we should be saying, what we should be putting our faith to. Then he says, but this is what God says about 105. Do you not know that I led the people out with silver and gold and there was not one feeble one? as I delivered a nation. So he's saying when you see these temperatures, get ready because I want to remind you of a time when I delivered a nation when there wasn't any sick among them. How many of you would love to not have any new viruses, any new variants? Come on. Come on. Any new announcements of diseases? Come on. Because yes. that season is not on us anymore, let's Come say. Come on. Wouldn't that be great if they reported that? Hey, the season is not on us anymore. Yes. And God's saying, you need to pray this. And then they'll say, what is this that has reached 118? That's hot. <laughs> and God says, it is a sign, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes, in, who comes to save, who's come to save this nation. All right, did those temperatures happen? All right, let's look at the different headlines. And then I want you guys to comment. They're... Are they putting it up? Okay, can somebody okay. read those off? Come on, Anthony. Go Matt. ahead. I had to pay them dinner for be up here tonight, and they're so quiet. <laughs> so it uh, looks like the, in the bottom right, it says, these 22 U.S. cities could all break 100-degree temperatures today. Wow. Uh, here's the one about 103. It's about to get to 103 degrees in Fort Worth. Here's when heat starts and when it ends. And then there's another one for St. Louis. Friday's 103 high temp breaks St. Louis record. Hottest day in 2023. Mm, wow. Uh, All-time record high broken in Mobile, Alabama on Saturday, 106. Salt Lake City temperature reaches 106 degrees. Another record for the date. Wow. Phoenix hits 107. Hottest day of 2023 so far. And I believe in Phoenix, Matt, it hit 118, right? Yeah, you know what the, somebody the last, told me? Signs yeah. were melting. Can you imagine signposts like you're wow. going down Dodge Street and it says Odge? You're like, what? <laughs> what? What's, 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 what's okay. Odge? <laughs> <laughs> There's right, the what, sense of humor I mentioned. Oh, but what would, what would you do? You know what I mean? If all of a sudden the signposts are melting, you don't know where you're at. 
you know? <laughs> and then you tell your wife, seriously, I know I was heading down Dodge, but now I'm on Dodge, and that's why I'm late. <laughs> Well, you didn't pick the kids up from preschool. I can't help it. The signs you are melting. You run a red up. light because it's yeah, melted. The signs are melting. <laughs> right. you know? Q Street starts looking like O Street or something, you know. I mean, we wouldn't know, right? Yeah, you wouldn't know. Yeah, but right. no, Anthony, to your point, it was 118 because I remember the last pulse that we did. We talked about it, it being 118. But even today, um, the New York Times was talking about this. Corpus here. Christi, Texas is the hottest place right now today in the u.s wow. at 115 degrees today that was put out this morning wow. oh my goodness okay and usually heat expands throughout the day it was 115 this morning well and That's... then and then on july 4th so independence day weekend there was a headline that said it was the hottest day on the planet on record yes so since hottest they had day. started recording the earth's temperature as a whole it was the hottest day on record for the entire planet as a That's whole. that's crazy yeah. so i'm looking at like Fort Worth, Texas, and t uh, today 104, tomorrow 107, Friday 108. But the Lord gave a word. I was, um, can't remember where I was at, but the Lord gave a word recently that one of the signs would be that it would go from hot and then suddenly yes, it would shift it. and cool down. So here's their temperature, 104 today, 107 tomorrow, 108 Friday. And then on Thursday, it's supposed to be 76 next week. Wow. Yep, yep. So like little yeah. to that point, Little Rock, Arkansas. Sorry, Dallas, yours is a little bit hotter, but that's because um, Little Rock, mind, Arkansas, I won't, I won't 110 degrees today. What was it? Say it again. 110 degrees today, but next week it's like okay. only 80 degrees. It's All right, incredible. So what is this point to? What is this point to? God said, and I'll just I'll just read this one. God says that the reason things will be hot, temperatures shall arise and be very hot, says God. But the temperature shall arise in this nation against injustice. All right, so what the, what the heat, I believe, is pointing to is it's pointing to. Now, there will be those that are watching, and I know you're going to say, oh, it's just the natural this and the natural that. You know, when God speaks something ahead of time, and then it happens, and then he tells you what we're supposed to do as Christians, when you see these temperatures. As a response. As a response, it isn't just the weather. Right. Who made the heavens, the earth, and the sea? That's right. Okay. People would love, you would love to pull God out of the equation. I can already see you doing that. <laughs> and and, and that's, that's what people do. They pull God out of the equation, and they try to absolutely discount things, and it's why they don't discern properly what is going on. Right. You have to look at what God says. Now, I want to show you something about the scales of injustice. I want you to look at Luke 18. I want you to look at verse 1. This is very important. Are you getting anything out of tonight? This is awesome. I just want to encourage you because I felt like some of you were getting discouraged. Jesus spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not what? Faith. Not faint. Okay? That's what I've been doing over the last few days is don't faint, pray. And then when God began to show even something better, I'm like, oh, my God, Lord. You know, and I'm, I can't wait to teach you on Sunday the principle about two things, human filters and, and the principle of a point of reference to point you to get you where you need to be. But the key is don't faint. Pray. If you feel like you're fainting, pray. Yeah. You know what I do? I get up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I pray. Same with Brenda. I pray. Right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes as I'm pacing the floor, I'm hitting stuff like the couch and stuff because I'm tired. But <laughs> I got to pray. I, I, I love God and I love people and I want things to turn around. And if you start feeling like you want to quit, you pray. You get in your prayer closet. That's I don't right. care if you fall asleep. At least you got there. That's what right. I told the Lord. I said, well, at least I got up. I'm here. If I fall asleep, just kind of you know, give me a rain check tomorrow. <laughs> you know? but, but he spoke a parable. Men ought to pray and not faint. Look at That's verse 2. So Here we go. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared God, not God, neither regarded men. Do you know that there are people today, there are people that are watching today, they have no regard for God. Right. They don't love God. They don't right. think there's anything wrong with lying, stealing, cheating, right. being evil. Th there's people that don't even regard you. They don't care about you. Right. It's true. And it's bad if that gets into legislation. 
That's Where right. you get people Say that, that don't care about God and they don't care about you. Say that. We don't need people to lead like that. That's right. We need people who love God. And that's something people, people should pray, that God would raise up the right ones. That's right to lead correctly. Yeah. So this woman had a need. Here she was a widow. Can you imagine? You know, I, we have widows in our church and I always think about them. We look for ways to, you know, be arms and hands extended. Pastor Doug and Pastor Keith, they do a great job. But they came unto him and said, avenge me of my adversary. So she was facing an enemy. She was in a legal battle. A legal battle. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, don't ever think that people who are nasty who lie and cheat and do injustice, that they don't have a conscience. <laughs> Every person in the earth has a conscience. People ignore it, but don't ever think that God doesn't put his finger on them. Come on, he did it with Pharaoh 10 times. 10 times he went to him and kept his finger pointing at him. It's true. Let my people go. Let my people go. So your job is to keep praying that they will come to themselves, that they will hear what God is saying to them. And he said finally within himself, though I fear not God. Now, why did she, why did she, watch this. He said, I fear not God. I don't even regard man. I don't even care about men. Yet because this widow troubled me, sometimes you have got to keep fighting for what you believe is right. Come on. That's good. And stand for truth. Yes. Stand for justice. Yet I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming, she wears me out. Okay, now the enemy wants to wear you out. And the Lord said to her, hear what the unjust judge says. And shall not, now here's the part I want you to see, shall not God avenge his own people? In other words, he's not like that judge. Right, he's not like that judge. Who cry day and night unto him. How many of you since 2020 and all the events of 2020, you have upped your game of praying? Yes. Do you think your prayers are making a difference? Absolutely. Yes. This is why there's a window opening. There's a shift that's beginning to take place over our country. It may not be big significant signs yet, but there's little signs of a cloud the size of a man's hands. It's indicating that the bigger breakthrough is coming. But so what powerful. we have to do is not give up. We need to keep praying before God. Though he bears with them long, watch this. I like what verse 8 says. Watch this. This is so powerful. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Why will God avenge his own people or the suffering or the hurting? Because he's a God of righteousness and justice. That's right. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man, this is talking about Jesus, when he comes, shall he find what? Faith. Okay, but what is the faith in? In his ability is the to faith, bring justice. Is the faith in the legal system? No. no. Is the faith in man? No. The faith is in a God. When there's wickedness happening, will he do something about it? Come on, that's good. When we're watching our children suffering the way that they've been attacked. Right. That's it. When we're seeing things happening to innocent people, mm -hmm. is God going to ignore it? No, he's not. We've got to continue to pray. And will he find faith? What kind of faith? The faith that manifests, come on, the cloud the size of a man's hand, his justice. Now let's look at slide five or six. This is interesting. This is at the beginning of the year. Look at this word that uh, we received. And so it would be, says the Spirit of God, that as you look at what was 2022, for there is a two and a two, 22. And so that's what the year seemed to represent in the earth. For I speak of this former season so that you may understand what is taking place. And what will be the future years? God says it was two and two because it seemed as though it was a balance. And it was though your nation, United States, was divided. Which wow. how many believe that our country has been divided? It's, yeah. it's sad. But now I say you are 2023. It is no longer balanced. Notice the God of just weights and the God of fair balances and scales. For anything less is an abomination to me. And so I show you a sign in 2023 that things will begin to tip now. Wow, the scales will on. begin to turn. The scales will begin to turn and go the way of righteousness and justice, says the living God. How many of you believe that that yes. is so? Yes. You know, one of the greatest things that I, I think is amazing is there's this football coach out there that just wanted to pray with his team. Right. 
Come how on. would that be any different if somebody wanted to, to pray to whatever their God was? And they do. And they get, they get their opportunity to. And he had to go to the courts and everything. And he said, I'm just an average guy, man. Just wanted to pray with my team. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? In the courts, they said, it's okay. You can pray for a few minutes. And that's just not a ruling for that guy. This is for our country. Right. Come on. Do you understand? Things are shifting. Yeah. One of the things that made our country great is religious freedom. That's right. And still does. And still does. Amen. All right. Anybody, I want you guys to go ahead and talk. <clears throat> Well, let me just add one thing, and then I'll let the the guys say this, is that um, when, you know, it talks about 2023, and I I really believe that this year we're seeing more things shift in the way of the kingdom. Um, We've talked about a few of just the headlines of things that are taking place, um, and even just the Sound of Freedom movie that has come out. um, To me, that is such a tipping of the scales. Okay, can I I show you a prophecy? Okay, look at this prophecy. January 1st, 2023. You've got to see this. This is at the beginning of the year. Who ever even heard of the movie that people are arguing and fighting over? Right. Well, not really very many people are arguing. It's mostly been in the, uh, upon the media that they've been arguing and fighting. But most people you right. talk to out there on the street, you know, and I ask them a question. I say, are you a Democrat? Are you a Republican? They say, it doesn't matter. Kids are being mistreated. Right. And that's the truth. Yes. It's about helping the innocent who no, can't because speak pa- for themselves. parents on both sides of whatever the That's aisles right. are, they don't want their children being taught in the schools things that they don't get to have a voice in. That is, that's where you just touch the parents. And so, yes, that's the, that's why you're hearing people. They're going to this movie. I mean, we run into people who, they don't claim to be Christian. They're of all sorts of backgrounds. And they'll say, no, I want children to be treated right. You cross the line when you touch the kids. You cross the line. Amen. Well, that's what Jesus said. Listen, I'm going to quote Jesus. He said, if you touch the children, it would be better. This is the Lord said this. Be better that a millstone was tied around your neck than you cause one of these little ones to stumble. So but true. look at this. This is January 1st, 2023. And uh, it says, and the weight and the unfair treatment of the innocent has gone on long enough. This is uh, slide nine. Slide nine. Is oh, that nine. slide nine? I think seven. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. nine, nine. And, and, okay, long, and God says, no, I will not allow an economy to cripple you. No, I will not allow them to continue to treat you like you are animals and herd you to slaughter of ignorance and the slaughters of mandates. I mean, understand that. Yes. Not again, for this will be what I will change and tip the scales where a freedom shall fill your 2023 freedom. that shall spill over in the coming remaining years of this decade. Do you know after that prophecy, the mandates were lifted? Yes. Do you know what came out that was the number one movie this year? Yes. Uh, uh, it says, where freedom shall fill your 2023. I know. It's he incredible. already said it at time. There was no mention of that movie. No. Yes or no? No. no. I never knew of it. Did you? know? I didn't. No. And God says, yet your whole year is going to be filled with freedom. Hallelujah. And so we have to understand that this is, this is what uh, God is doing. Well, listen, we need to uh, wind it up here. We should um, let the game changers comment. Yeah, what I want you, them to what, comment what a little bit guys and we can say? pray for a minute. Matt? We didn't get into all of our content. Ahead, so. Go ahead. so all of these prophecies that were recent that Pastor Hank has been talking about, go back to a prophecy that you actually gave on New Year's Eve. And I, it reminds me of how quick we are to forget what God has proclaimed and what he has said the year is going to be. But how many remember the prophecy by Pastor Hank where he said this was the year of the cross? Yes. The year of the crook and the year of the crown. The crook meaning like the shepherd's crook. The sh- shepherd's crook. Yeah. Um, where he was uh, basically going to be dealing with injustice. But all three of those things are happening. And here's how. You talk about that small cloud. Well, did you know that the New York Post actually did a article and they called it uh, uh, Generation Z is returning to God. And in the headline goes on to state that one third of 18 to 25 year olds believe that there is a God. That wow. to me is a huge shift because yes. Yes. that number is up over 25% from 2021. Wow. Okay, here's another thing. That's phenomenal. We want to talk about the crowns, how Pastor Ring said this was the year of the crown. So basically this is talking about how God was going to be dealing with crooked and unjust rulers. Now, since that prophecy uh, of, from December 31st, 2022, 
every month of this year, except for, I think, April, no, except for March and May, there has been a prime minister or president that has stepped down suddenly. I'll give you the proof. January, New Zealand Which, prime minister minute, resigned. The, the, one of the signs of the weather, he would be resignation. Resignations. resignations. Yes. Yeah. He said that in one of the, the, mm-hmm. the prophetic words. And I'll go quickly here. January, the New Zealand prime minister resigns. That's, this is all 2023. February, the Moldova prime minister resigned suddenly. Uh, well, in March, this really, Lori Lightfoot got kicked out. Chicago <laughs> still didn't get it right, but we'll still pray for them. Uh, <laughs> April, the uh, prime minister of Finland stepped down. Again, there was no one in May, but in June, uh, Boris Johnson resigned from Parliament altogether. The economic minister of Finland resigns. In July, Dutch prime minister resigns. In August, Latvia prime minister resigns. In September, the Ukraine defense minister resigns. I wonder why. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. And now we're talking about the, the last part of this, which is the crook. And we had talked about this in the last prophetic pulse, but the number of children that they thought were dead or missing forever. Yes. And record numbers are being found. There was one child who had Thank been you, missing for 51 years, and they got How reunited. Many? I didn't hear 51 that. Anthony, years. Anthony, there was a prophetic word about when the children are found that they thought would. Do you remember that? Yes. Do you, can you paraphrase that or bring that around? Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> I don't remember it. Because well, the, the way you said it, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to botch it because it was. It was so yeah. profound. Well, we can bring it out in another pulse. But yes, yeah. but basically, it was just saying that the sign would be that that justice is being served is, and that hell would shake is that all of a sudden all these children who were thought dead or missing would all of a sudden start uh, to be how found. How many of you in this room remember that prophecy? How many of you remember that prophecy? I do remember. Hands are being raised I do up. remember. Yes, God said it would be a major sign. And uh, that's interesting. I wish we would have had that one ready to go. Yeah, we need to have good. one of those things you could just say it and then it comes up. But also, <laughs> all, three thi- all three of those things that was yeah, prophesied was, are playing out. Yeah. Wow. What's your comment, Matt? Well, actually, I just saw a comment um, on our feed about the Sound of Freedom movie was hidden by Disney for five years. You know what else? That's right. Yes. Yeah. You know what that's else true. that was trying to hide it was that stupid Barbie movie. And, you know, Anthony and I did an episode, actually, which if you have not seen it a couple weeks ago, you need to go back and watch it. We titled it Free Us of Barbie. (laughs) And uh, honestly, I'm telling you, anyone in their right mind that thinks it's okay to put sexual connotation into a movie or anything and try to make it about little kids, you know, And, 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 and it's meant for kids to go watch, but there is literally like... Things that should be completely out of that movie and not even on television right. within that movie. And it's like, oh, kids, go watch this. I have a problem when I'm seeing parents taking, uh-huh. taking kids, right. taking kids to these shows in streets of certain cities in America and things are hanging out. Things are out there. People are out there. See, the problem is we have too many people in our generation, in this country and in this right. world that are trying to clone themselves with other people they're living in the minds of other people we have to stop that and we have to stop trying to be something we're not even in the church okay trust your own anointing trust what god has put in your heart stop trying to live in the thoughts and in the minds of other people okay we've got republicans and democrats who don't know what side they want to be on we've got people who are trying to be the other gender Okay, we've got certain people who, instead of being involved in their church, are trying to uh, uh, basically be a part of woke culture now. Okay, and this is the problem. And God is saying, I've had enough of it. All right. And this is why I believe what you're planning to speak on and preach on in in, in OTH is so key for this time. Because here's the thing about it. Okay, God, here's the thing. The benefits are coming. Yes. The benefits are also here right now. We just need to tap in. We need yeah. to honestly tap in because here's the thing about it. God is not coming, okay, for some rescue mission. He's coming for a rejoicing mission, okay? He's coming to say, listen here, the job is done, okay, well done, not there's still more to be done, okay? So we got to understand that right now that, listen, there is more work to do, Okay, we can't just sit and be like, oh, God, come help us. You know, we've got to absolutely tap in and occupy. God is saying the way it is made. The path is here. 
Now jump on the path and let's start changing things in this country and in Praise this world. God. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, awesome. We had a Love lot it. more content we could have got into, but you know, I will it's say this. The time. I just want to follow yeah. up. I know as we get ready yeah. to close on on your comment there, Matt, about yeah. um, you know these this terrible content being put in movies and cartoons for children. Um, that's why they need to get Zepto. Uh, but it's not a plug. But truth of the matter is that this is where we do Which, occupy and this. stand up. I, I don't want to say too much because, but I have a major, 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 major company that would shock you if you knew who it is. I can't say it yet because I'm praying that has reviewed my Captain Zepto. And they are very interested in putting it out there and they have the means to do it because you grew up watching a lot of the cartoons and different things that are going on and they're interested and one of the things they said is you know what we love about your cartoon is it's wholesome it, yes. it makes people laugh it, it's it's funny there's no agenda it's just bringing good wholesome entertainment and it's got their attention because here's the thing what they have to put out there uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't have that. And they said, this is so refreshing. And they said, it's like you're paving the way for something new. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly what we're trying to do. You don't have to be filthy to get your message across. Thank you. Can yeah, you exactly. just be a decent human being and realize that children are impressionable and give them good moral behavioral things and let families come in and laugh together? Right. That's what we exactly. need to restore in our country again. That's it. That's so, so. it. So. But anyway, just pray for me that I'd make right decisions and good decisions, okay, godly decisions. Absolutely. All right. Well, I guess we are done for tonight. We're going to receive our regular Wednesday night offering. And, and we still um, possess the land. Let's keep going yes, because the yes. more war chests we have, man, we can seal some stuff up, baby. Yes. <laughs>